the first time the word Christian appears in your Bible. There's no Christian in the Old Testament. There's no Christian in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The word Christian. There's no mention of anybody being a Christian till this verse right here. As a matter of fact, the word Christian is only three times in the whole Bible. The other ones are over in chapter 26 when that king said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And then the other one is uh, in uh, uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, verse 16, uh, where it talks about uh, if any man suffer as a Christian. Uh, you know, that, isn't that amazing? You wouldn't think that, would you? You wouldn't think that at all. But here it is, Acts chapter 11 and verse number, let's see, 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. Well, they'd done a lot better than a lot of people. They went to church a whole year and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Now, I've heard it said by Bible teachers that the first time they were actually called Christians that it wasn't even a word of respect, but almost a mockery. They was only like, you're so much like Christ, we just call you a Christian. And in disdain, I'm not sure about that, but that's what they say. But anyway, they begin to use the word Christian for those that are saved by the grace of God. What I'd like to preach about tonight, and I'm just going to name these off real quick, so everybody listen, find yourself in one of these categories. What kind of Christian are you? What kind of Christian are you? You will see yourself in one of these uh, points that I mentioned. Number one, point number one, we, there is an unfed Christian. He won't eat. He's unfed. He's spiritual anorexic. Uh, stays on a diet spiritually all the time. Now somebody tell me what, it, what a Christian eats. What do you eat? We eat the word of God, right? Man shall not live by bread alone, physical body, but by every word of God shall man live, spiritual body. So um, uh, some Christians won't eat. They're, they're unfed. If you don't read your Bible and spend time in your Bible, you are what we call an unfed Christian. Now I've heard it all my life. They said if you give a dog table food that it won't eat dog food. And uh, I guess that's partly true in a lot of cases. You let it eat off the table, it gets used to that salt and spice that people eat, and it won't eat regular dog food, what, what it's supposed to eat. And um, I hate to compare it to that, uh, but if, if, a Christian, if, a, if a kid eats candy, 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 all evening, cotton candy and chocolate milk and Pepsi all day, and then mom can set out a good set of vegetables and stuff out there that's something good for him on the table. You know what he's going to say? I'm not hungry. I'm not eating that. I want more candy. I want more ice cream. I want more Pepsi. But you know what he's doing? He's filled up on junk. And the average Christian tonight is so filled with junk that they're not hungry for God's word. This is the meat. This is the vegetables. This is the steak. This is what I'm, let's put uh, muscles on you, brother, higher on your chest. Say. And uh, this will, uh, this will uh, make you strong, Christian, amen? Uh, but don't be one of those that don't eat. In Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16, Jeremiah said, thy words were found and I did eat them. They say that 80% of Americans tonight claim some uh, form of Christianity and say they believe the Bible. And yet, they cannot quote three verses of scripture from memory. It's sad. Somebody asked a little girl one time, they said, do you know anything that's in the Bible, honey? She said, I sure do. There's a rose. There's an insurance receipt. There's grandpa's, uh, a lock of a papa's hair that they got off of him before they buried him. And, and, and daddy's Masonic Lodge emblem. That's all she knew that was in the Bible. Isn't that something? You know, one of the things that amazed me a lot of times is, uh, is uh, when people find out you're a preacher, they automatically try to impress you and so you'll think they read the Bible. It happens a lot. Uh, I'll be at some flea market or somewhere and they'll say, uh, 
I said, yeah, yeah. They say, oh, you a preacher? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm a preacher. And they say, well, I was just reading over there the other day and they get it wrong and quote it wrong and have the wrong book and do the verse backward and make a fool out of themselves. And what they're trying to do is make me think that they read the Bible regularly. But I'm gonna tell you, I fuss at you all the time for doing this and I ought to do it more and one day you'll thank me. You ought to every day of your life get up and put your face in this book. You on Facebook, there it is. Put your face in that book right there. Put your nose in that. Feed off of the word of God. Let your, let your body, uh, soul, spiritual body, feed off God's word. Now, I'm gonna tell you something this, morning, this evening. Your phone is your enemy. Your phone is your enemy. You listen to me? It's a stand, it'll keep you from getting to God. Lay that thing down every morning. Open up. I read my Bible today. I got my, I got my reading in today. And... Uh, Carrie, she texts me every now and then and said, where are you at in the Old Testament? Uh, because uh, she, you know, she's reading her Bible all the way through this year, along with many of you in here. you still got time if you get on the ball. And uh, I've, I just finished my New Testament for the second time this year, the other day, and started again today. Because every four months, I read the New Testament. January, February, March, April, one, uh, May, June, July, August, two, started today, September the 1st, October, November, December. I'll do it three times this year. Lord willing, in a little over a year, I will have been able to read my New Testament 100 times. That's been my goal for many, many, many years. And if God lets me, I want. Now, those, a lot of people say, oh, well, uh, if I just make myself read five chapters, it don't do no good. Yes, it does do some good. That's like you, know, you have to make yourself get up and go to work, don't you? You have to make yourself get up and, and uh, you have to make yourself exercise, don't you? You have to make yourself take a bath once in a while, don't you? You have to make yourself do a lot of things you don't want to do. Get in that book. Now, if you want to, hallelujah, shout. And if you don't want to, do it anyway. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of this book right here. Are you an unfed Christian? Number two, let me name these all quickly tonight. Number two, are you a lazy Christian? He won't work. A lazy Christian, he won't work. Uh, Jesus told that boy in there in that parable, son, go work today in the vineyard. Work is a four-letter word nowadays, you know. Uh, people just don't want to do it. Uh, heard about this old guy, you know, he laid around on the couch all the time and eat potato chips and played video games and he got he's miserable and couldn't sleep and couldn't uh, and he went to the doctor and he went to the doctor and the doctor said, hmm, 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 hmm. He stood up and said, give it to me straight, doc. I can take it. He said, you're lazy. <laughs> and the guy, the guy said, uh, what am I going to tell my wife? <laughs> can you give me a little more of a medical term? I can tell you something wrong with me. Uh, he said, you just ain't fit to shoot, your problem. I mean, you need to get up off that couch and get busy for God. I'm telling you this evening, don't be a lazy Christian, amen. Uh, like I said that one time, uh, uh, all them protesters down there protesting the rotten establishment, if you want them to go home, throw a job application at them, amen. Ain't that right? I, Lord, have mercy, y'all. Uh, you, 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 you need to work for God. You need to work for God. The Bible said, work while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. Do you know why we run them buses and I push it all the time? Because the day may come when we can't. Do you know why we go and work for the Lord, give out tracts? The day may come when we can't. Get busy for God. Do something for God. Uh, uh, give some money. Do some, uh, what? get you some tracts. Get you some youth uh, camp meeting flyers and go put them, put them out. Get you a handful of tracts. Text people, call people, get put something on the internet. Make a mark, brother. When you die and leave this world, make sure this world knows you've been here. Don't be a lazy Christian. Number three. Number three is the worldly Christian. He won't separate. What does that mean? A worldly Christian. He won't separate. The Bible says, come out from among them. Who's the them? the whole crowd out there in this world. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. 
and touch not the unclean thing. You are to come out from it and not be a friend of the world. You know the Bible said if you're a friend of this world that you're God's enemy. That's, that's the truth. I don't know how in the world them mega churches handle stuff like that. I mean, uh, if you were in a mega church, if you went to Hillsong or somewhere, I, can you imagine the pastor getting up and saying, don't be like the world if you're a friend of this world. That, no, no it, it don't fit. It don't fit that atmosphere. That atmosphere is geared against that. You know how come we know we got the right atmosphere? Here's how we know we're right. Because the scripture don't contradict what we believe. What we believe goes along with the scripture and this book teaches you're saved by grace. It's a gift of God. But after you're saved, come out from among them and be different. There ought to be a difference in a Christian than some old Joe down at the house somewhere. Amen. That means you don't hang out at the bars. You don't go to the clubs and the marina clubs and the lake clubs and hang out where people's getting drunk and raising cane. Ladies and gentlemen, you're separate. If you're a girl, that means you, you dress. Lord, have mercy, y'all. I mean, uh, good night, people. Uh, they, 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 ought to be able to, they ought to be able to tell. You, 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 girl, you ought not to look like that you jumped off of the house in your blue jeans. That's the only way you could get in them. Somebody held them while you jumped in. And uh, you ought not to look like uh, uh, some street walker somewhere. You ought not to have so much makeup on they can write your initials on your jaw, on your jaw there and look like a prostitute. You're supposed to be different. Amen. Amen. You're supposed to look like kids. You ain't supposed to look like you fell in a tackle box. Fishing and they all got fish hooks stuck all in you before you come to church. Amen. That's right. I tell you what, I heard a song this morning. I'm flipping through the radio. I, I got my radio, my AM program to all the gospel stations around here. And I, I put on and I heard this song on there and I thought, Lord, I've got on the wrong station or something. That ain't Christian. And I looked and it was. When you have to look at the call letters to see if what you're listening to is Christian music, there's something wrong with that music. When you have to say, now is this, is this easy listening to R&B what, or is this www.da-da-da-da-da-da-da? Uh, there's something wrong with your music. Yeah. There's something wrong. Call me what if you want to. Call me old-fashioned. Call me crazy. You'll find out one of these days. Oh. I'm telling you, the Bible said be separate. Be separate. Be separate, saith the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we are to be, not to be a worldly Christian. Number four. Number four. Quickly tonight, a tied up Christian. Are you tied up, Christian? They can't get loose. Too many of God's people are just so tied up. They're so tied up that they can't get loose to do nothing for God. You can't get them to do nothing. Well, I can't, I'm pre, uh, uh, I always think about, when I preach on this, I always think about, Carrie, I know who I'm talking about. She probably, might be, Todd might remember, but maybe she'll probably be the only one here that remember. Daddy had this little dog, Tiny, remember Tiny? And Daddy had this little old dog, and he come home with that thing one day, and it was, uh, he, he said it was a miniature collie. I don't know what it was. Uh, it, was it was real short and had long hair. Just old, it looked like a collie, but it was about that tall. And poor little old tiny, nobody wanted her. Uh, she had a little bitty mouth and a little bitty nose and little teeth looked like little needles and uh, tiny running all over the ha- uh, yard and they'd feed her and we'd feed her and whoever was home she'd go hang out their back door and, and get fed. That's the best way to have a dog. That's the best way to have a dog. God did not intend for people and dogs to live yeah, whatever you want, what you want to believe. That's your business. Uh, but uh, that's a dog is a dog. Uh, but anyway, uh, old Tiny, she'd come over to the house, and we'd feed her, and she'd go over there and they'd feed her. She'd go over there and they'd feed her. And uh, she'd get out in them weeds up there in Hoppy Tom. And we got a creek running down from the mountain, down there into the fish pond, and there's briars and everything. Poor little old thing. Poor little old Tiny. I'd seen her come over at the house and couldn't even hardly walk. And she'd have briars that, that broke, that broke off where she'd drug them and they'd be in her hair stuck like this and sticking that far out. And she'd be dragging them like that. And cuckleburrs, y'all know what cuckle, cuckleburrs are? They're porcupine eggs. And uh, 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 beggar lice, you know what that is? Y'all know what beggar lice is? Them little bitty green things. We used to go running in the woods, come out, and they'd be all over your shirt. I mean, there are millions of them. How in the world? Why in the world does something like that even exist? I guess because of sin in the world. Uh, but uh, we, that poor little 
old tiny to have beggar lice all in her eyes and briars all over where she couldn't hardly walk. And the only way you could help her just cut just cut all her hair off. Not, we never didn't mess with her. She's nasty. And uh, she just run around like that. But it finally just wore out. Sometimes one of the kids, would, uh, one of the girls would pick some of that stuff out of her. But I'm, I, that reminds me of a lot of Christians. When I, when I think of a lot of Christians, I think about little tiny. I mean, here they are like that. They got this. They got their movies and their music and all that. And just so tangled up, they ain't worth a dime. I mean, you walk in sideways spiritually. I mean, when the choir's singing, you're like this right here. You're looking at your phone. I, you're tangled up, man. You need to get loose. Get loose. Get loose. I don't want nothing, nobody holding me down, holding me back from doing what God wants me to have and do and be tied up Christian. Can't get loose. Number five. Number five. Have you seen yourself yet? There's a scared Christian. A scared Christian won't take a stand. A scared Christian won't take a stand. Now the Bible said be strong and have a good courage. You heard the old saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll what? That's right, that's the truth. You'll fall for anything. You gotta take a stand somewhere. And as I preached this morning, if you didn't get the message this morning, you really need to get it. As I preached this morning, you're not gonna please everybody. Everybody ain't gonna like you. Everybody ain't gonna accept you. If everybody likes you, you're the biggest hypocrite in the in town. I'm, you you got to take a stand somewhere. You got to take a stand somewhere. I made up my mind a long time ago, I'm going to take a stand right there on that book. I like what Brother Ed used to say all the time. Brother Ed would get up here and he'd preach and he said, some man called me narrow-minded. And he'd take his Bible like this and he said, that right there is how narrow I am. From here to here. We're right in here in the middle somewhere. From generation to revolution, brother. Uh, we believe every word of it. <laughs> Ain't that right? We believe every word of it and we'll stand in and on the word of God. Brother, have you, take your stand, take your stand, take your stand, take your stand. Be on fire for God and get the job done for the glory of God. Amen. Some Christians are just wishy-washy. They said this. They said some Christians are like a wheelbarrow. You have to push them to get them to go anywhere. Some are like canoes. They have to be paddled. Some are like a cat. You've got to keep a string on them or they'll just fly away somewhere. Some are like footballs. You can't tell which way they're going to bounce next. Some are like balloons, full of hot air and ready to blow up any minute. But some are like a good gold watch. Open face, solid gold, steadily working, full of good works and faithful and right on time. Thank God. Are you a Christian that's scared or will you take your stand? Y'all done took your stand at school? Last Sunday night we had that back to school service. We had 80 something kids up here. I was saying I'm gonna take a stand at school. Have you done that? Have you done that? Well start tomorrow, bless the Lord. Start tomorrow. Stand up for something. Stand up for something. Be a man. Be a man. Any little sissy can float downstream with everybody else. Stand for God. You young ladies, stand for Jesus Christ. Stand for the Lord. Don't be a smart aleck, but stand for the Lord Jesus. Number six, are you a defeated Christian? He won't trust the Lord. Always negative. Things are always awful. No use trying. Uh, you, 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 you look in your rearview mirror all the time. You know what will happen if somebody looks in the rearview mirror all the time? They'll wreck. You check it once in a while, but you go this way. You look this way. It's all right to look back and say we made mistakes, thank God for what he's done for us, and all that. but you, you look forward. If you're going to drive, get anywhere, you look forward. Now listen, people. You need to make up your mind that I am going to be a type of Christian that is not defeated. I'm going to get the Lord. Now here again. It all depends on who you listen to. You better be careful who you listen to. Did you know if you listen to negative talk, negative people all the time, first thing you know, you're going to have a negative attitude. Do you know that's even scriptural? Do you, back there in the Bible, uh, back there when they was fighting them battles and stuff, you know, one time uh, uh, Moses and Joshua were leading them people, they said, now, if one of your brethren tries to discourage you, they said, you, you just leave that guy at home. Leave him at home. Go fight the Lord's battle. Because if he's, he's saying we can't do it, and he'll tell this and we can't do it, and that and will tell that and we can't do it, and then that and will tell that and we can't do it. We used to have, I used to have a guy in a church years ago, not this church, 
Um, I used to have a guy in the church years ago, and he he would he would not like something that I wanted to do, and he would uh, he he would just really think I he loved me, and I mean he backed me up and he supported me and everything. But sometimes I'd make a decision that he just didn't didn't like or didn't agree with, and it wasn't nothing about simply just a a, a, cho- a move a direction for the church. And uh, here's what he would do: he'd go over to this man, he'd say, "You know, uh, I don't how you feel about that thing." Brother Danny's talking about uh, they some of them that don't like that. Did you, hear what it, did you hear what he said? There's some of them. You mean one? You mean you? Mean you. Yeah, that's what you mean. You. There, you, ever heard, you ever talk to anybody like that? There's some people. The news media are experts at that. Many people. Yeah, you. <laughs> There's some people that don't agree with that. And if he said yes, oh boy, I got him on my side. And then he'd go over here, this, and say, you know, me and so-and-so's been talking, and there's some people that don't agree with what Brother Danny is wanting to do. I had one deacon one time kept his tithes out for years. Deacon! He said, oh, he paid his tithes, but he gave him a missionary because he didn't like something I did. Now, I don't know who he's trying to fool, but our tithes don't go to missionary. Our tithes go to the church. Then the church supports the missionaries. If everybody did that, the church would shut the doors and the missionaries would have to come home. Amen? Be careful who you listen to. Be careful of these negative talkers that's always talking down the church and talking down the preacher and talking down the... I'll give you a good example. Here's a good example. Talk about spin. Let me show you a little spin right here. We all know we have two sets of news media in this country, and I I watch very little news. I've been trying to keep up with the hurricane. I was talking about them people getting shot down there last night, and that was all. And I check that when there's something big going on. But as far as watching the news, I watch very little. And when I do, I put it on both sides and hear what both sides say. And most of the time, truth's in the middle somewhere. This side will slant it their way, and this side will slant it their way. And you got, you got about 85% on one side, that's what we call the left, and about 10, 15 is what we call the right. Now, the right is usually closer to what's right, not always, but usually. The other day, when they come out, the Dow, in the um, what do you, stock market, which I don't understand and never been able to get to the point where I wanted to, uh, if you do, God bless you. I've never even had a desire to understand the stock market. If you do, hallelujah, pay your tithe. But uh, I, I, I was wondering, they said, oh, the market's down, the market's down, the market's down. And they said, it is now official. And, and I watched this news channel, and two or three times it said, now they're saying one-third of the world's economists are saying we're headed for a recession. One third of the world's economists are saying we're headed for a recession. I said, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, we're all going broke, we're going to starve to death. Well, I turned it on the other channel and they said, two thirds of the world's economists agree there's no worry about a recession. See that spin they put on that? Can you see that? You tell me it ain't important what you listen to. Two-thirds believes we're all right. But the way they made it sound, people can tell you the same story and twist it and make it sound and make you think all kind of crazy things. There's a there's church over here in Lenore. It's been 20 years ago, on fire for God, doing real good, and they had some problems. Preacher preached something some people didn't like, and uh, it, was, it was doctrinal. It wasn't nothing... nothing sinful or anything, it was a doctrine and some of the other preachers got mad and a bunch of people left the church you know and everything and I saw somebody and they said Lord that church has gone down I'm telling you I'm worried about it I don't know if we're going to be able to keep the doors open and uh, I thought oh my goodness oh my goodness I, I, poor church that poor church I'm, I've been praying for them and then I saw the pastor and I said what's going on and he said well we've lost some people but God's blessing he said we knocked on 9,000 doors this month 9,000 doors like in a month or two's time. See how, now both of them was 
thought they was, they was spinning it so that they would look like the right information. You gotta be careful who you listen to. You better be careful what you listen to. That's why you can only trust your Bible. Now that news thing, they, you have, there's, there's, there's people on the, on the left that say, oh, we're gonna have, a, they're hoping we'll have a, a recession. They're really hoping it, which makes me think they're led by the devil because they hate Donald Trump and I'm not campaigning for Donald Trump. And, and all they're saying, well, Obama did it and he's just reaping the benefits. And then you got this crowd saying, no, 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 no. Now the truth is probably they're both part right and spinning it to their advantage. I'm saying, you better, you better be careful what you listen to. It'll make you defeated. It'll make you defeated. We can't do it. We can't afford it. Everybody's backslid. Nobody's standing for God no more. You better watch that kind of attitude. Are you a defeated Christian? Lastly, I'll say this. Are you a victorious Christian? He'll succeed. He'll succeed. You know what? It sure is good once in a while to meet somebody that's got the victory. It's a blessing. It's refreshing to meet somebody that's happy and got a smile on their face and saying, God's good, ain't he? Most Christians you meet walk in and trip over their lip back there coming in that door. It's hanging down there so far. They trip on it. Oh, preacher. Oh, preacher. I can't make it. I can't pay my bills. I'm, I, everything's awful. I, I just somehow made it another Sunday. Uh, boy, I'm telling you, I like to see Hallelujah Howard come in. I like to see him come in and sit down right there. You, he may not all be in the spirit, but bless God, at least he ain't fussing all the time and griping and backslid and mad. And up to, listen, brother, that old man, he'll see he's nearly 80 years old. He'll kick that foot up about that high. He'll, he'll slap you if you're anywhere near him. I'm telling you, brother, and just shout the victory and got a smile on his face and say hallelujah, praise God. It's refreshing to meet somebody. We got the victory once in a while. How, what would y'all think if I got up here every Sunday and I said, well, y'all, I've, I've had a terrible week. The devil's just, he's just beat me to death and I ain't had much time to study, so I'll read a little scripture and we'll go. <laughs> it wouldn't be long just saying, I'm gonna go find me somebody that'll preach. You don't want to be around. You don't want a preacher gets up here and poor mouth and how bad he's got it and how terrible it is and the world's caving in and, and the sky's falling. Brother, you want to talk like I did this morning. Get up and say Jesus is still on the throne. Jesus is still coming back. God still loves you. Heaven's still sweet. We're going to live there forever. It's good to have the victory once in a while. I know you can't walk shouting all the time, but good Lord, y'all be on the victory, have victory sometime or another. Amen? That's right. Which Christian are you? Are you an unfed Christian? Make up your mind tonight. Leave your phone alone tomorrow morning and read the Bible. Are you a lazy Christian? Make up your mind tonight. I'm going visiting this week. Are you a worldly Christian? I'm gonna go home and throw away some of my clothes. Are you a tied up Christian? I'm gonna get the cuckle bird country music out of my life and the blackberry briar rock out and music and movies. Are you a scared Christian? Go to school tomorrow and take your stand. Go to work tomorrow, adults. Take your stand. Are you a defeated Christian? Trust the Lord. Listen to him. Are you a victorious Christian? Let's stand by our heads for prayer. What kind of Christian are you? Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Miss Desi's coming to play. Nobody's moving, nobody's talking. Right now, right now, where you stand, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Right now, say, what kind of Christian am I? What kind of Christian am I? You might want to just slip right out of your seat. Come down here and kneel at this altar and say, Lord, I'm going to be a victorious Christian. Not a fake, but a victorious Christian. Will you come? Come on, come on. Let's just get down here and pray. Amen.